Hey guys, so if you're a Swift programmer and you find in a couple years Swift is being diminished over time, meaning there'll be less and less Swift jobs happening, and I don't know 100% sure if that's going to happen, but if you watch a previous video, which is a little bit controversial, I said that in the mobile space, because of hybrid apps and because of projects like Flutter, there's a strong potential that Swift use will just diminish because, in general, native app development is going to go down. Now, this is already happening with hybrid apps. I just did a little bit more research to confirm that, and it's happening more and more and more simply because it's just a lot less work to write your hybrid apps rather than having to write two separate code bases, one in Swift for iOS and one in Java for Android, right? So they're going to be using the web stack, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's why today, if you're going to learn any languages, any coding languages, any programming languages, those three are the, the ones that I recommend the most. It gives you the widest range of possibilities in terms of jobs, in terms of business, in terms of freelancing. Anyhow, but what happens if you're a Swift developer and you do find in a few years, like Ruby, and many, many other languages, though it's a great language, Swift is a great language, what will happen if the demand for Swift developer, developers goes down? Well, it's not a big deal because if you are a competent Swift developer, for you to jump ship into Flutter using Dart or into the web stack or into Python or any language will be literally like this. You see, one of the main themes of this particular YouTube channel, things I've been teaching, something I've been teaching rather for many, many years outside of YouTube to young developers, try not to think of yourself as a Swift developer or a Java developer or a JavaScript developer or a Python developer, etc., etc., etc. Try to think of yourself as just a developer and think of the programming languages, think of the frameworks, Think of, think of the libraries as just tools that you can access. Now, yes, of course, you will find certain tools you will know better at a particular point in time. So right now, you may, you may be really good at your Swift and iOS development. So, of course, you're kind of married to that technology right now. But it's not uncommon. It's actually quite common for developers to have to switch from language to language, from framework to framework. This is just par for the course. This is nothing unusual for developers to switch over. But the good thing is, once you know how to program, you know how to program. Something I've told people many times, I'd rather get somebody with five years experience writing Python and have them work on a JavaScript project than have somebody with only one or two years of JavaScript experience. Why? Because a person with five years of Python coding experience is very likely going to be a much better developer than the person with only two years of experience with JavaScript. You see, even though Python and JavaScript are different languages, programming languages share 90, 95% of the same concepts and the same basic techniques, if you will. And yes, each language has its nuances and it has its own code, its own syntax, but they're so very, very, very close. So please, try not to be so hung up on what language you use at a particular moment. Just because you're writing Swift doesn't make you necessarily a Swift programmer. Try to think of yourself, I suggest this anyhow, as just a programmer, developer. And this comes out of experience. In my own experience as a developer, I've written commercial code where I've been paid to or I've made money from code I've written in nine different languages. And of course, in the beginning, like just about everybody else, I was resistant to go from one language to the next because I was comfortable in a particular language. But uh, what you'll find, though, as you jump from language to language, from framework to framework, you're going to get better and better as a programmer. That said, when you're first starting out, it's best to stick to one so you really master it well, you understand it well, and that's going to raise your game. So if you do, say, Swift for three years, or four years, and you find that Swift demand is really dropping, just like it happened with Ruby. Remember Ruby, Ruby on Rails. At one point, it was the uh, 
It was the crown, crown jewel of web development frameworks, and people loved Ruby. Ah, it's great. Now, at that time, I predicted its demise for market reasons and other reasons, which I won't get into here. And, of course, Ruby has since fallen quite a bit. You don't hear about it. You don't hear about people wanting to do things in Ruby, Ruby Rails. That being said, it's still around. There's still Ruby work out there. Don't, uh, don't kid yourself. It's just not as nearly as hot as it used to be. Now it's JavaScript, even JavaScript. Back in the day, I remember when JavaScript was a joke language. It was a joke JavaScript. JavaScript was a language nobody wanted to use. Who wants to use JavaScript? Pfft. That was JavaScript for the longest time. And uh, it's interesting how now it's become probably the most important language out there today overall, programming language. So you never know what's going to happen. But it, it shouldn't matter to you because as a professional developer, you can just go to any language and just jump right into it. I hope that makes sense. Ciao, guys.